Hi, I'm Christian Griego with the Getzen Company, and today I'm joined by Dr. John Nathan Whitaker. That's me. <laughs> you got it out. That's good. <laughs> Sorry, Dr. Jonathan Whitaker. Now, um, one of the things I get asked a lot by younger players, we, we have uh, a lot of high school musicians come through the doors, and they're always mm -hmm. asking career advice. And so I'd, I'd kind of like to look back at your career, if you don't mind. Sure. And wh where are you original, originally from? So I grew up in Benton, Kentucky, which is the sort of far west corner of the state of Kentucky. And then after high school? I uh, went to undergrad at Murray State, which is just south of where I grew up. And why'd you go there? Unbelievable teacher. Just a, a, Ray Conklin was amazing at, at churning out great students and just... Uh, unbelievable mentor, father figure. I mean, it was, so it was... Your undergrad was in... In Well, so I started in music education okay. and switched mid-degree to music performance. So you got your undergrad in music performance. I did, yeah. And so the first piece of advice I always tell a young player is go and take private lessons with the teacher you're considering right. to make sure that it meshes and it's a good fit. Absolutely. And he was the person that I studied with in high school. And so it was a very easy transition for me to go and, and be in his studio. And so just like me, at this age, you're going to become an orchestral player. Oh, I, I mean, and, it's like I and it, take over the world. As soon as there's an opening in the Chicago Symphony, they're going to call. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that and, was the mentality. Yeah. And, and, and so um, I ended up here. Oh, I'm, just, and, really... and I'm, I'm here too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so after your undergrad... Yeah, I went to the University of Minnesota um, for my master's degree. Same deal. It was to go study with Tom Ashworth. Um, had an unbelievable experience there. There's um, also good freelancing in the area. There's some freelancing, and I did happen to, before I went up there, had won a job in, a, in the Duluth Superior Symphony, which mm -hmm. is um, about negative 15 to 20 degrees colder than it is in Minneapolis, believe it or not. And so I was doing a little bit of freelancing. So why did you decide to get a master's? Well, because I... I, that was what you did, and I didn't. Yeah. And I, I wanted to get a master's and really chase after the sort of performance aspect of it. Yep. And being in Minneapolis sort of afforded me the opportunities of being in a city to study with Tom, mm -hmm. whose pedagogy that I really believed in and still believe in. I think he's an unbelievable artist, an unbelievable um, pedagogue, and so versatile, and just such a great a great teacher. But but also to be able to hear the Minnesota Orchestra and the St. Paul oh, Chamber yeah. Orchestra live. Yeah. On a weekly basis, I studied a lot with Doug Wright. Mm -hmm. um, in a, in addition to um, uh, you know studying with Tom for my degree, it, Doug's wife was my accompanist in school. She's a fantastic pianist. It was this is a great fit for me at the and time. And what was your degree in for your master's? It's same music performance. Music performance. And this is a do as I say, not as I did, and we can we can talk about that at the end if you want. But um, and so then after that, um, what did you decide to do? I was done with school, mm -hmm. and the Chicago Symphony oddly had not called yet. And I needed to do something. Um, well, Jay was only 70 at the time. <laughs> yeah, he'd only been the orchestra. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Um, I, 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 um, I, nothing but respect yeah, for absolutely, 100%. those people in that orchestra for sure. Yeah. But um, I had an opportunity to go be a high school and middle school band director in a school district close to my home that I had been working with their high school marching band in their summer camps, probably mm -hmm. for the better part of four or five summers. And their band director, the head band director at the time, was a trombone player that went to Murray State and to Minnesota and was someone that I played for in the summer. Um, and I'm still very close with him and, and we, we talk frequently and, and you know still have a really great relationship. Um, but I needed a way to live and pay some bills and, yep. and, and sort of deal with not going back to school. So I went and I was a middle school band director full time, but also team taught at the high school. And my main responsibilities at the high school were with the marching band. Yep. And then did a little bit with the concert band in the in the in, in that part of their their thing. But it was very quick in that year that I was like, eh, I don't want to do this yeah. forever. Yeah. I need to go back. I need to maybe I'll go to doctor. And my thinking was, I need to go to to get a, to get a, this doctoral degree, the next degree. So then I'll be for sure that I'll win a job right away. And that's why I picked to go to Indiana University and yep. study with D. Stewart. Mm -hmm. I figured, well. You know, D. Stewart was in the Philadelphia Orchestra. I'll take lessons for a semester or two, and they'll call me right away. Like, yeah. this is not, you know, yep. completely ignorant to what really happens and, and how these careers... Well, there's only careers... three, sometimes four in an orchestra, and when you're in, you're in. Right. For a, and, and so a lot of time it's waiting for an audition right. that may not open up when you're ready to have a job. Yeah. And so I went to Indiana University and, and was there and completed the doctorate there, um, it was about midway through the, the 
the um, the degree there that several things happened that were pivotal in my sort of development and career. Um, one was was the hiring of Peter Ellison, our mutual friend, yep. and yep. that we've been to up here to Getson and Edwards together multiple times over the years. Um, that's he he really it, along with Mr. Stewart sort of played a pivot, pivotal part in sort of helping me. Um, you know, progress through the career. And I also got to the point to where I was really halfway done with the degree and realized that what, this college teaching thing kind of does sound a little bit appealing, you know, and then that it's sort of about midway through, that's kind of when I started to actually consider, well, maybe I'll finish this degree and, and sort of see what this life is about. And I wouldn't change it for anything now. Um, so after you finished your doctorate, yep. what happened next? I got a job um, at Henderson State University in yep. Arkadelphia, Arkansas. Your first um, college teaching job. College teaching job, tenure track, full yep. all, all, you know, benefits, the, the real deal. Inherited a pretty good studio there, several mm -hmm. um, really, really fine um, players and even better people. Had yep. great relationships with a handful of faculty there. And it was sort of a really good place for me to sort of start and cut my teeth in this college yeah. teaching thing. Um, then, So that was two years there? I was five years there. Five years, okay. And wanted to sort of be around and in a bigger, on a bigger campus and yeah. just sort of have more resources and a, a bigger reach. Mm -hmm. And applied for several jobs and and um, some I didn't get and was upset about, some I didn't get and was glad that I didn't and whatever. Yeah. And then the opportunity in the fall of 2009 came about to go to the University of Alabama, where I am currently. Um, and it was, you know, we, we jumped at the opportunity and have been there 15 years. Now, so. John, John's kind of teaching you a lesson a little bit in that you don't put all your eggs in one basket. Often, what he's just said is multiple times, he's, he's had to try for three, four, five, or six things. Yeah. And then what's meant to be usually will happen right. along the way. And I made, I made a little bit of a joke about do what I say, not what I did. I, yeah. If I had to do it over again... Um, I would take a, maybe two completely different paths. I mean, there's a, there's a, a maybe a, I, a, for my age, a path of going a particular route to really make a run at a, at a particular, at a playing career. Which because would I, be? Which would be conservatory, which would be, you know, that, yeah. that sort of path. I had no idea that in high school and a little bit through college, undergrad, the first year or so, I didn't have any idea that that was a, that you could that 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 was even a oh, thing. My, my daughter, know? she's told me already. She was like, "Dad, after high school, I don't I don't want to do science. I don't want to do um, um, I don't want to do math anymore." Yeah. And I'm like, "So you want to do a conservatory?" She goes, "Well, I just want to do music." I'm like, yeah. "Well, that's what you're telling me." And right. And I didn't know either. And well, so I, I went to a state school just in. Yeah. So, but for me, while my contemporaries, the people that are my age that are playing in professional orchestras, which we have many yeah. mutual friends yeah. that are doing that. The summers they were going to Tanglewood and, and doing all these things, and I was teaching marching bands and, yeah. and you know doing. So it was just a different sort of path. Um, yeah. But I think my involvement in all of those band centric things all the way through school afforded me the opportunity to get my first job and to get the job at, at Alabama because I was able to. Yeah, I, I, it, I wasn't sort of. You a one-trick pony. You can exactly, do and I things. wasn't sort of sticking my nose up in the air yeah. with band rep, and it was you know it's just like yeah. it's it's everything has its place and its function, and in a small school like where I started, that pretty much exclusively trains music educators. That's you know they want somebody that can kind of speak that language and recruit and all of that stuff, and so it all plays. So now I, but I also I I I really I don't try to talk people out of getting a performance degree. Um, but it, it take I, I think it really takes a special person, a special you know aptitude and talent and sort of drive to do that. What yeah. typically happens now for me, and this has changed in my 15 years even in Alabama. But what typically, if I think of my current studio now, you know, two or three of my best players are not music performance majors. Yeah. They're either um, music education majors or you know, maybe engineering majors or something else that play. And then so it, like, for example, I have one that's, that's about to graduate that last year graduated with a music education degree. He is doing a one year MBA yeah. now and is on the audition circuit to go to grad school next year. He's got, he, he got through a bunch of pre-screenings at some big places. Yeah. He's just going to make a run at it, but he's got several, 
I don't want to say fallbacks or safety nets, but I just think it's smarts, insurance, yeah. several things that he could do along the way. And his, his idea is to make a complete run at it and see what sticks. And then, you know, after a certain amount of time, a predetermined amount of time, if he needs to make money, yeah. then he can, he can, a fallback he plan. can go do that. Yeah. You know? it's, it's interesting. I have a, a really good friend, Stuart, who um, drives a Porsche and not a lot of, not of, yeah. Twi- yeah. I, I don't I, even know how to spell that. <laughs> <laughs> and incredible bass trombone player plays in more symphonies and orchestras um, around uh, Wisconsin than I do. Um, and I, I have my own reasons for not, not doing sure. a lot of freelancing and, and it has more to do with my family, yeah, but yeah. Um, became a, a dentist. And always played, has always performed, yeah. and has always played. You don't have to have a degree to perform right. if, you, if you have the talent. And so you can do a lot of things. You can be an architect, an engineer, a mm-hmm. dentist, mm-hmm. and play the whole time. And when you're in college, you should be freelancing as much as possible and performing. Right. So I, these are the tips and tricks that um, we've learned along the way right. and even guiding people. So you've been at Tuscaloosa for 15 years. 15 years, that's so, right. Along this path, I mean, what's next? Well, uh, what's next is that I have recently been appointed to take over the trombone studio at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. And so that's a very new, uh, hot off the press news. And I'm incredibly excited about joining that faculty and sort of the lineage and the history of the music, pro- you know, yeah. the music department there, the band department there, everything that's, you know, just a comprehensive nature of what they do in that school. Um, and sort of getting that set up and getting started and yeah. hit the ground running right away. I'll, I'll begin in August of this year mm-hmm. um, and, you know, hope to sort of build a similar tradition and culture of trombone playing and, and studio that I have built in Tuscaloosa because yeah. it's that's something that I'm incredibly proud of is the is the documented you know group of work that we have yeah. done and and the number the countless number of students that are out doing what it is they want to do you know and whether it's playing professionally or a lot of lot of college professors um, lots of high school band directors a lot of other people that that are doing things in other fields than music mm-hmm. that are better for having come and been a part of the program and learned, you know, sort of what what they needed to learn and, you know, went their different path. But I'm really excited and or I'm really proud of that and I'm excited to sort of bring that to the, you know, to the next stop. That's fantastic. It's really interesting to see um, a person's career um, and look back like we've just done. And you, you may be in high school right now um, as a, a brass player thinking, oh, well, they're just, it, it will, you never know. You turn left, you right. turn right, and you never know. Um, I, never in my, in, I never thought I'd be doing what I have done now for 27 years yeah. or with, with the diff- different companies and my associations and with the musicians I've worked with. Right. It's just, it's unbelievable. Be open-minded to any opportunity that comes. And when you have an opportunity, I, I would suggest if it feels right, don't hesitate. Right. Take the opportunity. Right. A lot of times people, if you overthink and you, you, you complicate it, sometimes it's right in, the answer is right in front of you. And so just be open to different opportunities because you never know. Watching you work with um, the Million Dollar Band a couple months ago right. in uh, Indianapolis was amazing. I was amazed by the, the amount of communication that didn't happen. I was amazed. It's a well-oiled machine, yeah, yeah. and people would just look, and they knew. They know what, what the, what's next. They know next what the looks, and, looks, and yeah. it's it's just boom, boom, boom. With all the practice, and, and and having a well-run organization, you can learn from from a marching band. You can learn from every experience you have if you're willing to see what's around you. That's right. That's right. And I, you know, I've been very fortunate to have great teachers. I've been very fortunate to have great colleagues in all my stops. Um, and a supportive family, and it's you know it's just been it's been a great ride, and you yeah. know I've, I've got a couple couple more good years in me, I think. So <laughs> well, and we're gonna put in the in the description, we're gonna put all your handles, yeah, of and course, how to reach out to you, and if, if you're in if you have any point um, are in the region and need to take lessons, you can reach out to to Doctor Whitaker. That's right.